Our next awardee is uh, Ms. Shweta Dalmia, the founder and CEO of Climatepreneur India. Over to you, Ms. Shweta. Firstly, thank you to GCPIT, Aparna Ji, Santosh Ji for such an amazing honor. I still don't feel that I am a leader because I truly believe that you never choose to be a leader. You are chosen to be one. You know, like if I'm getting this award for the work we do at Climb Up and and to be very honest, I didn't choose to build Climb Up and I would in fact say that Climb Up and chose to, you know, get built by me. And this award really belongs to every mentor every teacher, every person who has really helped us build Climb Up and All, this award really belongs to my family who has who have shown like amazing resilience and this award really belongs to leaders like you who are doing amazing work and who are inspiring many others to do the same thing. A lot have been said on leadership and probably you guys are, you know, much more experienced, much more knowledgeable than what I am. And you know what leadership is. I would not say what, what leaders are and what leaders do, but I would just say that in whatever areas you guys are working in, you, we are working from different continents, from different countries. Please incorporate climate and oral mindset. Please integrate climate action to whatever decisions you take. And we will be together unstoppable. So once again, thank you, GCPIT. Congratulations to all the fellow amazing leaders here. And please keep inspiring me the way you always do. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations to you, Shweta. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whichever part of the world you are joining us from. Global Council for the Promotion of International Trade, or GCPIT, is proud to welcome you to the special interview series in connection with the Global Emerging Leaders Awards 2022. I'm Aparna Ji Kumar, the Global Co-Chairperson of GCPIT and your host for the show. Global Council for the Promotion of International Trade is an organization based in India, South Africa, US, UK, and UAE with board and member council, uh, council member representation across the world. We at GCPIT believe in fostering leadership across different levels. Recently, we have been re reflecting on the significance of perspective in our role as leaders. When we advance from being an individual contributor to a leader, our perspective starts changing. We gain access to new information, have conversations with new people, and think about things in ways we didn't have to before. These changes or learnings have immense power, and we believe that this interview series will help us and many aspiring future leaders to gain new perspectives especially global perspectives from these emerging leaders. Today, we have with us such a leader to tell us about her perspectives on leadership while leading her venture. We have with us Ms. Shweta Dalmia. She is the founder and CEO at Climapreneur. She is also the host of the podcast, The Climapreneur Show. The name sounds very, very interesting. As I mentioned, Shweta, let us know more. And uh, before starting, uh, congratulations uh, for being nominated for the Emerging Leaders Awards. We are proud to have you with us today. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me here. And thank you for the kind nomination. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, as I mentioned, that's a very interesting name you have for your venture. Climber Pronia and the Climber Pronia Show. When I heard the name, I was really curious to know what is it. And it sounds like an entrepreneur who drives climate action yes. right before we begin talking about leadership i would like to hear from you what is it and how did all this start so uh you know it started way back in 2018 when i was figuring out that what should i be doing you know like i really wanted to do something in the field of climate change climate action making impact but uh, I didn't know where to start from. Then, uh, you know, my mentor mentioned to me that climate change and storytelling, you know, it could be something that could be done together. So that was a time that, like, I actually started thinking about it. And the word Climate Pano was born way back in 2018, like when I didn't even know that Climate Pano would be a company, a startup in the coming years. So, you know, I've always felt that these entrepreneurs, you know, they have got that immense potential in themselves. They, like I call them climberpreneurs, the, the kind of change they're driving, the kind of solutions they are building. You know, they like, for example, I read one of a fellow climbpreneur, Angad actually mentioned this morning on, a, on his Instagram that making climate solutions is like leading the next industrial revolution. So that is the kind of potential these entrepreneurs have and not just established entrepreneurs, but today there are like youth. I get DMs, get messages all the time that, okay, I want to build something. Where do I start? How do I start? So I thought that why not to bring these stories, bring these stories of these entrepreneurs who are actually driving climate action. Stories of not just impact, stories of how they raised funds, stories of how they kept going when nothing seemed to be working. You know, in fact, one other thing which we added recently was that I 
I believe that Climapnor is not just a person who has started his or her own business. Climapnor is any person who integrates climate action to whatever they are doing, whatever leadership role they are. And that's why on the podcast, you would not only see people who are actively building climate solutions, but also existing entrepreneurs, existing people in the policy section who are integrating climate action into their roles. So that is what Climapnor is. I think that is an amazing thought and amazing uh, uh, thing you are doing, especially as you mentioned, youth. Youth have mm. immense potential in driving climate change. And uh, if you had to pick up uh, four or five words or short phrases to describe how a successful leader in a global environment operates or behaves, what would they be? So firstly, I would mention that you never choose to be a leader. You're chosen to be one. And uh, Perfect, if your people, exactly. if your people, if the team or whatever environment you're leading in chooses it to be a leader, you have got huge responsibility on you. For me, a leader is someone who who is empathetic, who understands kindness, who does not leave anyone behind. Today is a time when, for example, building climate solutions, you have to be inclusive. You have to think about taking everyone with you. You cannot leave anyone with, like, you know, so that for me is a leader. Leader in today's generation to me is someone who does not leave the hand of climate action. Challenges will be there. You'll find, if, for example, if you have to integrate climate action into your organization, I'm 100% sure you'll face immense amount of challenges. But despite the challenges, you are looking towards building something and looking towards creating an impact. And today's leader just does not think about money. Money is important. I'm not saying money is not important. But today's leader thinks about making impact, empowering people, empowering their lives. So that is what a successful leader today is to me. Amazing. I love your energy. And uh, I think people like you can really uh, drive uh, climate action. And uh, we're talking about organization. How would you describe the differences in the organization culture between a global environment and a more local or regional environment? So, you know, like I have worked in both the organizations, like I have like till now a part of global organizations because having ha like I've traveled around the world from London to New York to Paris, I've traveled all the cities talking about climate action, you know, speaking to people in this area. And also I've worked at more of a local environment. So I like for me, what works is that, you know, whenever like while working in India, whenever I need a huge perspective, like a bigger perspective, whenever I've, I feel stuck, whenever I feel things are not working, I go back to my global environment. I go back to my global community who gives me a bigger picture. So this is what could be done. This is what you should be looking at. But whenever I want to be connected to the problem, whenever I want to be connected because I'm working in India, I'm making the impact right now in India. So I come back to the local community because this local community is more connected in India. They feel the problems, they feel the solutions. And that's like, for me, that is how the local and the global co communities work. So for me, driving impact is a, like, you know, is like a partnership that happens between the global environment and the local environment. And you cannot say this is better. You cannot say that is, you cannot say that. Both have their own pros and cons. I think that is a great way to look at it. Uh, uh, how to have a global picture, to have a bigger picture, we always have to uh, look at the global scenario. And uh, what about digitization? How should companies approach this digitization according to you? So digitization, you know, like means different things for different companies, means different things for like companies working in different sectors. Talking about specifically in the media space or in general with respects to climate action, I would say that today a solution created on say a, a nearby county or a remotest area of London could reach a village in India in somewhere. So that is what digitization today should be. Today we have got all the solutions we need to solve the climate crisis. What lacks is the kind of partnerships, the kind of technology transfers. That is what digitization means. And you should like, we should use digitization to connect. For example, pandemic has been a great example. The world came together. So why can't the world use, use digitization? The companies use digitization to come together and solve the climate crisis, basically look for opportunities. And apart from that, I would also say, you know, in this digital world, this digital world gives you an amazing opportunity to let people enter your world so just be transparent like for example i always tell companies i always tell ceos that whatever issue you are facing top ceos now really face uh, like issues in not issues challenges in integrating sustainable to their business models just open about it tell people okay i want to do it but that's why i'm not able to do it that opens opportunities to collaborate so use digital as a medium to collaborate as a medium to highlight your challenges and we will be unstoppable as a nation as as globe
amazing amazing i can uh, really uh, feel that uh, energy and you know the passion in you when you are talking and what was the most challenging difference in leadership or culture that you had to understand and overcome in a not global really, state not really not really i did not face any challenges i did not face any you know difficulties in fact having been a part of i, I feel myself fortunate to have got that experience to be a part of the global community you know like while i was like uh, in a there was an erasmus funded program by government of france and i was fortunate enough to be a part of it so we were in a group of people like they the group of people belonged from all the areas of france and there were some specific people who didn't did not understand english and that was like the only language we could speak like i could speak out of hindi so you know he didn't understand english i did not understand the fluency of the uh, like the french and still we could communicate so working in a global environment actually gave me that perspective of taking everyone together of understanding people even when we could not communicate of understanding people while we're coming from different cultures different backgrounds so i feel that that is the element that has stayed in with me and now i don't like i just look at people i look at people from empathy i don't it does not matter to me where they are coming from what culture they belong to what language they speak to i can communicate to any person without knowing his or her language and that is what working being in that culture gave me being in that culture taught me the power of empathy and it just taught me that you know everyone is facing climate ch uh, challenges everyone and everyone everyone beat any age beat any gender any language any place can be a part of the solution with their own skills so i did not face any challenge in fact that experiences gave me like it shaped the mindset which i today have and uh, from all these global experiences what different perspectives do you bring to the business as a leader i don't know if i bring a different perspective of being a leader i don't, I, I don't even know if i'm a leader i would i'm just fortunate enough to have had mentors who have given me you know a solution oriented approach and like i don't i i genuinely don't know if i bring a unique perspective but the perspective which i have always led climate entrepreneur is that we don't have to leave anyone behind and if we have to leave anyone behind we're not going forward because my father always tells us thing to me that you don't choose climb up or not climb up or not was never about you it and it will it will never will be it is about the impact that you're going to create it's about the people you're going to serve so i didn't choose climb up or not climb up or not chose me and all mindset which i just have is just take everyone together don't blame people understand them create solutions that include both people and planet and if going so some people might be like what you're doing is not worthy some people might not understand it's just the experiences they are coming from but you don't have to fight with them you have to try to explain your point and maybe somewhere down the line they will see it so just be kind be empathetic and just move forward amazing and uh, uh, talking about impact what advice would you like to give someone who has uh, taken a senior leadership role to be more impactful in the role they have taken up from your experience i would like you know like fix i i was speaking about these two words over and over again empathy and kindness would be for me the top most priorities just be empathetic just be kindness kind and also if you are on a top role you know like don't just help people to grow inside your organization help people empower them motivate them to grow in their personal lives it might be possible that that particular person has a bigger dream you know he or she wants to move out of your organization so help them to develop internally not just with a goal in mind ki okay if i help this she is going to make my organization grow he or she will but help that person achieve their their you know vision of success and if you do that you're a true leader you know and also i would just say that because if you are in a senior leadership role that you might have you know some kind of i would say powers i don't know if that's the right word but you know just motivate people to incorporate climate action sustainability into whatever way they can and you also do it i'm talking about climate action again and again and again and again because this really needs to be done right now so help people achieve their version of success that would be my advice great advice and uh, as say you said climate action is something we have to uh, you know repeat again and again uh, and uh, are there any uh, you were mentioning about uh, some mentors right are there any training or resources such as like coaching to help you be better or is it just 
a lot of practice so you know there are definitely there are coaching there are you know a lot of things which you'll find online and like you'll find internet full of these things but for me what has worked is a watching my own father my father is one of the greatest example of the leaders i have seen and india is full of such examples you'll find it everywhere you move out to a nukkad wala uncle you'll find the way he handles his team his team you might say okay who are in his team this is just some two people working at the store but that is really his team the way the way he handles his team the way he greets you every time with a smile and you know like for example demonetization happened in india and a lot of you know businesses were almost the the world turned upside down but covid happened but up, still the after that these businesses are trying to come up these leaders are like i have seen my father the way he took care of his team amid covid was amazing the way he has helped people turn you know losses into profits just with the right strategy the way he has helped his team the way he has helped people outside of his organization to build a house just with the right strategy not by helping them with some finances but just with the right strategy so what i would just say is that observe observe how people are working around you and apart from that you know they like there are different kinds of books and podcasts for example i i always listen to you know leaders like indra noe and oprah winfrey ratan tata so just understand like like understand the mindset which with which they are building it and you'll be unstoppable So for me what works is that i really want to connect with these people like you know connect with the mindset like for example maybe years uh, ago how did indra when he entered into pepsico what did she went through for example ratan tata when he started you know in this what what mindset did he had sports personalities when they feel like they're losing the game how did they actually turn that losing game into winners game for example in cricket you know when you know that okay this is the ball but we are one last ball we are still not going to win but how do they still play that last ball they keep their shoulders broad they move forward and just play it so i would just say that understanding and connecting to these people maybe through podcast if you have fortunate enough connect with these people understand them and that would be my only advice amazing and uh, as you mentioned we all have our own role models like our dads or our heroes and we have our uncles to guide us and we need these mentorship or resources to be made available to the broader leadership team within the ecosystem also yes. right what is your thought about this definitely i believe that uh, these of these resources should be made available in the leadership team and i in fact i also feel that you know time to time organizations should take up like such efforts where they are letting you know their employees or their team interact with these people if possible and if not maybe have like you know like we do a joint music jamming sessions have make such sessions cool like where you play a podcast where you play such people talking and just like you know talk, listen to them then you have like sort of group discussion discussions like how can you incorporate that mindset into your organizations have that those kinds of exercises where you, you're just not you should, you're not just reading a book you're not just listening to a podcast you're not just listening to an interview but after you've listened to it you're also sort of like delving deeper into it and uh, we were mentioning about covid uh, crisis we also saw what uh, the pandemic did uh, to businesses globally what have you learned from leading in this crisis leading in the crisis so you know i my startup is bootstrapped we uh, like i saved some amount of money while i was working back in london so we use that money to start and when you're working on limited uh, capital it's it's difficult it's not really easy you'll find a lot of sleepless and anxious nights but the, for me that is one of the crises where i'm leading in uh, you know like with limited resources but what it has taught me is that leading in crisis actually pushes you to think out of the box you know so use that as your power a lot of times you would feel that nahi ho raha hai ya fir chhod do what should i be doing but us time pe just you know be at it calm down and because my father always tells this thing to me that you know when you're thinking about 100 things when you're anxious ek bhi rasta nahi dikhega but just when you'll calm down you'll find 100 ways to do things so strike like you might not have you might think that okay 10 cheese nahi hai 11 nahi hai 12 nahi hai but try creating with what you have and you have got everything you have got the first thing you've got is you've got yourself you've got that mindset so abhi tak you were doing it right to aage bhi ho jayega and i would just say that this thing that in crisis people say that a lot of people give up 
but if you love your cause if you love what you're doing giving up will seem as the most difficult like most difficult option and you do everything to not give up if you believe in your cause so that is what the crisis had taught me the crisis also taught me that certain things are momentarily you know like i sometimes feel that my god why is not happening kyun and all that happen it, it's common but it's un- having that self awareness that okay it's momentarily having that self awareness the kind of decisions you're making from are not coming from out from zones of fear so that self awareness also important so work on a uh, work on yourself work on your professionally work on spiritually work on your mental state meditate and those are things which leading crisis has taught me amazing and how do you promote diversity equity and inclusion in the workplace as a leader so i believe that diversity is one of the most strongest things any organization could have and i'm lucky enough to have people in my organizations uh, who come from across you know like with different backgrounds backgrounds which are not similar to mine and not not similar to their backgrounds so working in diversity actually you know like for example uh, i think recently a story came to us okay that we want to do a lot was around some water body and uh, one person in our team so he has spent like you know 20 21 years of his life in a village near a water body so he related with that issue so much you know and the kind of uh, narrative he could come up with was just because he had that special connection with the body for example uh, like we were working with some organization and you know like they were talking about tribals and the kind of changes they go through while we were like, like uh, while they were undergoing sustainability so that particular person he had got a different uh, skill sets he has got different kinds of experience where he was telling okay ha aisa aisa bhi hota hai so that is maybe we could do something like this so i would just say that diversity we should not look like like i don't look like promoting diversity what i believe is that a diverse group a diverse group is more stronger because a diverse group brings together diverse skill sets and their diverse backgrounds help us to build solutions that are inclusive so diversity will help you build inclusive solutions because you build for everyone not just one single set and as i mentioned we are not going forward by leaving anyone behind and if you want to work together diversity has to be a way for them i might be diverse so they made me they made me a part of climb up now right so why do i have to promote them i just want to be with me like my family so that is the way i look at diversity and inclusivity and it is helping climb up and all lead and it, it is definitely making climb up unstoppable because they are bringing together so many different experiences amazing amazing thought ha uh, huh? <laughs> Shweta, and uh, before we close, what would you like to advise the entrepreneurs who are dreaming to be successful in the global market? I would say, don't dream to be successful, uh, because what is even success? Success is just you know what you want, and you're trying to just build your version of success. Dream to create an impact. Dream to leave this world in a better place, because once, once, once you want to create an impact, right? you'll forget like the things people tell you building for money building for x y z things you'll automatically turn empathetic because you're building for driving an impact money will definitely flow it might not it might but build for creating impact and while you create impact you're creating a amazing legacy for people like people coming will remember you for creating that legacy and while you do that please not leave climate action please not leave leave people that would be my message Thank you so much, Vita, uh, for joining us today and enlightening us with your thoughts and experience. I really loved your energy. We need more uh, youngsters like you to come uh, and to drive climate change and the sustainable development goals. And uh, as you mentioned, entrepreneurs have uh, yeah, immense potential to lead yes. climate change. And uh, I love that you mentioned youth, especially they have a huge responsibility towards our planet. and uh, as you said you never choose to be a leader you are chosen and, mm-hmm. uh, right and today's youth thinks more about uh, creating an impact more than money and uh, driving impact is ultimately what matters right and let us look at the big picture and apply from the global level and apply it locally let's be transparent and let us try to get mentors who give us solution oriented approach and empathy and kindness are the two key words you have taught me today and wish you all the very best in your uh, future endeavors as well i'm sure whatever you have shared from your experience would be helpful to many aspiring future leaders to gain new perspectives and climb the success ladder looking forward to working with you in the future 
as well. Thank you so much, uh, Shweta. And as you, know, you, so on a, yeah. and as you know, we are on a huge mission, a mission to impact the lives of 100 million entrepreneurs. We would like to invite you to join us and be part of this game-changing mission, Impact Mission 2030. Our aim is to build a global community of great leaders from 190 plus countries by 2030. And uh, we would like to invite our viewers to, to join this mission. If you're interested, you can mail to contact at gcpit.us or find us on all social media as GCPIT Global. That's all for now from us. And we will be back with another emerging leader to inspire us and share us their perspective on global leadership. Till then, this is Aparnaji Kumar signing off. Take care. Bye-bye. Have a great day.